oh hello making something very interesting <laughs> Instantly, it's like meth. Very clearly not, but you know. What's it laced with? That's my question. Cocaine. Yeah, they look smashed, mate. Absolutely. Off their tits. Oh, it's a Cinnabon. <laughs> oh, it's all working at a Cinnabon. He did say, he did say there was a reference. Hey, I tell you what, mate, you should never get rid of that tash. We know he does. Interesting use of black and white, very lazy music, you know, very much kind of like he's very bored, he's not happy, very trademark, Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan, showing stuff with the cinematography, with the music. Yeah, what gets him on the path, eh? Hey, we're gonna find out. Who's this guy? Hello? What? He's just minding his business, buddy. Get back to your coffee. That is a stare and a yeah, yeah. No, look back down, look back down, mate. Don't worry about it. Okay, do worry about it. Oh, he recognises you? What are you wanted for, Saul? Go! Okay, he's very sinister, but I feel like he's alright, he's done, he's fine. Yeah, 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 he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic fake out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Alright, buddy, what are you running from? When are we gonna lose the black and white? What's gonna give him happiness? A drink, maybe? Yeah, interesting. I like that we're starting here. I wanna see, I do. I wanna see what makes Saul Saul. Yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it, by the way? And it's so stark, the, the soul that we know, you know, the wisecracker, the confident man. So interesting that they've chosen to start the this show, you know, that centers around him and, and go back to this place of where he's very much the opposite of that. He's not spoken a word. He's very quiet. He's not engaging with people. Everything that we know about Saul isn't there. The way that they've structured it, based on what the audience must know about Saul, it creates intrigue right off the bat. I am starting to question whether it's just my TV, you know. Oh, hello. We got a go box, huh? False allegations bully you into oh, hello. Uh-huh. Better call Saul. Okay. Is this after? Is this after Breaking Bad? And he's had to hide and he's no longer Saul as a result, right? Oh, that's so sad. Interesting that that's in episode one. Hello, and welcome to Better Call Saul Sundays. That's right, the show that happens every single Sunday until we are finished with it. Today is episode one, Uno. Thank you for being here, and I hope you do enjoy. Flamingo check. Oh, it is very depressing though, isn't it, really? Seeing Saul struggling, not thriving after Breaking Bad, if indeed that's what it is. I'm going to assume for now, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, is he late? Is he not? Oh dear. Hey, if we're going to see a younger Saul, maybe he's not all that together. I mean, that would make sense, right? That is one hell of a doodle, sir. Dear Lord. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is he shaking himself up? Hey man, you gotta get a pep talking. Come on, you got this, you got this, mate. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? A black suit, no colour that we're familiar with. He's very much not the sword that we know, not quite come into his own yet. I like that. It shows me and makes me feel like we've got a journey ahead of us, and I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Oh, to be 19 again. <laughs> there he is. You'll recall that you also had an underdeveloped 19-year-old brain. That's true. If I were held accountable for some of the stupid decisions I made when I was 19. Oh boy, wow. Man's not wrong. I mean, most people are dumb as f at 19. They did a dumb thing. We're not denying that. Nice, good argument. Fact one, nobody got hurt. I feel like he's got to fail this first trial, right? That's uh, a bit of a reach, don't you think, Dave? <laughs> hey, his tie is not as banging as mine, that's all I'll say. They just... A little bananas. What did they do though? I want to know what they did before I judge. But I don't think they deserve to have their bright futures ruined by a momentary, minute... Good argument. I like it. I'm not saying a thing because I feel like they've done something really bad. <laughs> hey, nicely done though, dude. Nicely done. Nice. Now what? Alright, bring it to me, big man. What you got? Oh no. No words, just throwing, okay. Okay, it's bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's taking his time, he's confident. Oh God, someone leaves the room, that's not ideal. Okay, okay. Did they kill an animal or something? Because I can't forgive that. Oh, they're looking away. <laughs> can you, can you, yeah, well, yeah, oh God, a is that a dead body? Fourth period biology class, this one's for you. Watch it. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, dude, where'd all the blood go? He's dead, they suck it all out, Doug. 
I'm through the net pool now. Okay, come on. That's that's a little messed up. Well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna take that little back right now. That's messed up, man. Hey, to be fair though, Saw's right. No one, no one got hurt. Okay, that's so messed up. Sorry, I can't show that, but there's a head in that boy's hand. Absolutely not, sir. Yeah, fair enough. You've earned that look, mate. Wang in the throat hole. I will if you will, loser. Oh. No, they don't. Oh, they, they did it. They had sex with a head. No. One trial, $700. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I did say, I did say in a certain Breaking Bad episode, I was so curious about Saul. Why is he not being the big man somewhere, you know, New York City, DC, like, you know, a big criminal lawyer or something to that effect? Because he's good. We see that he's good enough he's not quite there yet maybe i mean to be fair what can he do with what what can he do with that case that's insane i want to erase that from my memory straight away thank you very much vodka please how much all of it but yeah it's interesting because we're seeing him in that position so ooh, let's see and we're already seeing money issues big theme big theme in breaking bad a little bit of a theme already here right so he's going to be struggling for money down on his luck what's he going to do law offices of james mcgill how may i direct your call <laughs> <laughs> Four o'clock it shall be. Cheers! <laughs> I love the body language as well. He committed. No. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Saul. Thank you. Three dollars. Mike? See five stickers. You want oh, he's still a cop! Amazing. Yeah, boy. Oh, first episode. I love it. Restoring my faith in the judicial system. <laughs> Either pay the three dollars, or you go back inside and you get an additional sticker. Yeah, he is by the book, huh? Fine. Interesting. So whatever journey we're going on gets Mike out of this as well. I wonder, I wonder if uh, we're going to see uh, the story, the story that Mike told when he was a cop. I mean, is he a cop at this point? I don't know. We're, we're near police. There were police in the background. Maybe he worked. I don't know. We don't know. I won't judge. But was that the real story? Is that how it went down? It was very, I, I feel like at least there's an essence of truth to it. Hey, are we going to see that? That's going to be interesting. Is it going to tie into Saul's plot? Oh, oh, I'm so excited. Okay. But yeah, I thought, I thought they might leave my, I don't know, to later down the line, but episode one, perfect. Perfect. Don't go looking for guilty people to represent. I mean, who needs that aggravation, right? Are they all going to be guilty? Like every single person in this show. My money goes missing from the county treasury, and the number here is uh, 1.6 million. Well, that's it's a God. discrepancy. It's a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. That's a big discrepancy, mate. Yeah, well. I just think I'd look guilty if I hired a lawyer. It's getting arrested. That makes people look guilty. If you sign it, um, I can get started on that defense strategy of ours. No, oh, he needs it. Yeah, he does. He needs that big dollar. Oh, come on, lady. I think maybe we should sleep on it. Oh, she was watching him that whole time. She saw everything we just saw. Look at that. Look, that. all of this. Craig. Boom. Yeah. Was she watching that whole time? She saw that and she was like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Please call me Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, so Jimmy McGill. Interesting. What's his real name? You would argue that is, right? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah card. This. Good. Thinking. Nice. Hey, phone number. Nice sort. On it. Yeah. Oh, this lady. Oh, she is. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Eat up. Run it again. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Is he gonna be faking it? Oh no, there's a camera. Buddy, look at me. Are you okay? Yeah. Are they trying to get a claim? What did you do to my brother? They're trying to get a claim. Where are you going? I was making an attorney. He came out of nowhere. He did come out of nowhere. Yeah, man. You ran yeah. over. This is, a, this is an act. This is an act, Saul. Nothing on video. Yeah. Very convenient for you, mate, isn't it? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Broke his leg. No, he didn't. Saul. 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 Call him myself. Don't call him. I'm doing it myself. Come on, Saul. They're wrangling you. What are you going to do to make things right? Come on. You can see it. You can see it. Yeah. $500. Wow. Come on. Ow, what the? Yes, boy. I'm going to give you an 9.6 for technique. Zero. Does a steaming pile of Scream payday to you, huh? Right? Oh, man. Also, the fact that the windshield is broken. Hey, that was a bit like... <laughs> Walter couldn't keep his from getting cracked at any point. Oh, the little callbacks as well. The salon. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting though, isn't it? How the same, the exact same as Breaking Bad. We have the protagonist 
instantly starting off with money troubles, money issues, right? He's got to go somewhere. And I mean, I know from, you know, when they met Saul in Breaking Bad that he was into something because, you know, when they held him up, he was like, oh God, oh God, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. And he threw out a name. I can't remember what it was. But he was like, uh, you know, he clearly had people coming for him or he was wanted in some respect, at least. Everything you know about Saul, right, you know he's come from some kind of criminality. He's very okay with, with very bad things. I, I love the parallel so far with Breaking Bad, you know, little as they are, it's just nice. But it's also, you know, again, it's demonstrating this, you know, this Breaking Bad universe just demonstrates how people turn to crime because systems in place don't look after you don't provide for you, don't help you at all, you know? And then it becomes, what choice do you have? Walter actually had the Elliot and Gretchen choice, right? I actually think, uh, honestly, in hindsight, that was kind of a weakness of Breaking Bad. I think, you know, the uh, the dilemma, the moral dilemmas of Walter were kind of cheapened a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, just because of that, because at any point, and I forgot it in my Breaking Bad reaction series, if I'm completely honest, but in hindsight and on the rewatch, I was like, honestly, everything feels a little bit hollow that Walt does, because I'm like, at any point, even when he got into it, he could have got out of it legally achieved everything that he wanted for his family if he just got over his ego. Do you know what I mean? It's interesting because I'm like, perhaps in Better Call Saul, we are going to get, you know, something like that. We're seeing it, you know, the the, the foundations of it right now. Are they going to give him an Elliot Gretchen style get out of jail free card? I don't think they will. I don't I don't personally think they will. I think that would be silly. I don't really see how where that would come from. But I do think that's going to make the actual crux of the matter and the decisions that he might make all the more compelling and all the more understandable for it in a way that Walter, because of what I said, wasn't. 26,000 to him? Is that to him? Oh, what? Let me just read that again. Yeah, pursuant to your discussions with Howard Hamlin, please find the enclosed check. Hamlin, Hamlin and McGill. Ah, so was this his, his old law firm? And something went a bit wrong. Okay, so they let him go. And he can't take that money? That's what they mailed him. He needs the money. We know he needs the money. He can't take that money because of what? Because he doesn't want to accept it because of whatever happened over there. That's a little bit of a Walter move if I'm reading that right. Okay, okay. We'll reserve judgment because I don't have all the facts. Oh, okay, we're gonna find out, are we? Nice do. Uh, where's Lord Vader? <laughs> oh, this is a fancy place, man. This is snazzy. That is shiny. Oh, Sir Francis. James. Well-groomed as always. Okay. <laughs> wow, a little bit rude, Mr. Francis. No sir for you. Keep Karen, yes. Karen Marie. You have meddled with the primal forces of <laughs> Okay. Do you want me to call security? <laughs> right. 26,000. Right. Not being funny, 26,000 seems low considering what I've seen of this place already. That's money for Chuck. Who's Chuck? Measly 26 grand. Measly, exactly. It's just a start. There'll be more. Unless you're going to just tear them all up. There'll be more. We can do it any way you want. Seems reasonable. One third of this place belongs to him. Okay. No more penny any checks designed to make it look like Chuck still works here. He doesn't. He never will again. Okay. And I, for one, believe he's gonna lick this thing. Okay. He's gonna lick this thing. So he's ill. Is he ill? And sorry, yeah, so he took the check. It wasn't his money, I guess. It was supposed to go to Chuck, right? Is Chuck his dad or something? Is it Chuck McGill? Sometimes in our line of work, you can get so caught up in the idea of winning that you forget to listen to your heart. Oh, you seem like a piece of shit. Give Chuck my love. I have nothing more to go on other than that little bit of sass there, but I don't like it. He's got a bit of a sh**-eating face, hasn't he? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, come on. Seriously? Oh, that's rough, man. They just didn't trust him. Hey, man, get out of your system. Who are you? Who are you? Hello? Was, this that, was that the lady in the conference room? Okay. We know each other. Hopefully. Could you imagine? To be fair, though, the confidence. Okay, guys, you need a new bin. You yeah, like we we've seen you can afford it. Are we about to see Chuck? I wonder. Okay, money's tight. University of Helsinki. Yeah, you're gonna have to get that translated. The Swedish, Finnish, Finnish uh, translating <laughs> into. <laughs> I'm sure that I love a good pun. I'll be honest with you. Working on the effects of electromagnetic fields on zebrafish. Okay. 
Financial times. Yeah, what's the deal here then? Very interesting. Lots of questions about Chuck. He's immediately presented as a very clever person, or at least that's what I'm getting, right? And uh, we've established his character already in the conversation before. It's always very interesting. It's an interesting device when, you know, shows do that, when that's written that way, right? When they're talking about a character before you've met them, before you've seen them, before you've made a judgment. And I do feel like it's interesting how they framed that as well, because I do feel like the way that they did do that and introduce Chuck without introducing him, actually uh, make, softens you towards him immediately. Because one, it's delivered by Saul, Saul's fighting for him, so automatically you're like, right, okay, so Chuck's the good guy. Chuck's, you know, whatever's happened here, Chuck's been wrongly, wrongly uh, treated or whatever, right, by these by these clean cut lawyers, right? You've also got the content of that conversation with Saul talking to them in a way that of like, you're, you're shortchanging him. You know, something's happened here and the, the overall tone is that you know Chuck has been hard done by by the company? Saul very much is like, yeah, you've 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 absolutely wrangled him. You've done, you know what I mean? So it automatically puts you as the audience the way that they kind of put that together before, like I say, before you've even met Chuck on his side. And I think that itself makes you almost when you do meet him, it's like, right, who are you? What have you got for me? Why does Saul feel this way towards you? And that's good writing because before you've even met the character, you're on his side and you know a lot about him. Uh, even though there's still a lot of questions. You know I'm going to beat this. Okay, you know beat I'm this. going to get better. Right, so it's a medical thing. Principis proficisci. Hmm, quite in Latin. Again, clever. You proceed from false principles. Your argument is built on quicksand, therefore it collapses. Yeah, it seems like a very clever man. Suppose my partners are forced to liquidate the firm. Then what? 126 people lose their jobs. Mm, he saw about this, yeah. Hamlin owes you everything. You built that place single-handedly while- Right. I helped. You helped. All the more reason not to tear it down, just for a little bit of cash. Seems like a good guy, you know? Chuck. Public Chuck. defender work is some of the best experience there is. Hey, put it not wrong. Had a case, Chuck, with three clients. It was a hell of a case, that's true. You're representing people who have nowhere else to turn. The money is beside the point. Interesting, interesting, because Chuck's already presenting this as like, he seems like a very moral man. And I wonder how much of that is Saul being like, yeah, but that doesn't get the job done. You can't just live a life necessarily on morals. I just I just feel like pe perhaps that's some of the characterization of Saul. Also, by the way, a little note, it's very interesting that Chuck's uh, got some kind of medical um, issue, right? Because I wonder how much of that is planting the seed of why actually Saul does want to kind of get involved with Walter because Walter is very much presented to him that way. Got cancer, medical issues, right? Like, let's not forget in Breaking Bad, Saul comes to Walter to be like, hey, let me represent you. You need someone. Like, it's very much Saul that comes and persuades him and gets the job for himself. It's not Walter that comes to him. So I do wonder how much of that choice to actually go deeper, a little deeper, was uh, predicated and, and seeded here, you know, with Chuck. It's very interesting. There are no shortcuts. Do good work and the clients, the clients will come. Will come. Mm. You are broke. I can't carry both of us. I've been trying like hell. Yeah, that's hard. But also, does Chuck know about the check? Here. A stipend. You won every week. $857 from Hamlin. Hamlin. Be pay him back. Every penny. I didn't want to take any. Don't. Out. I'm going to pay you back too. What? When Hamlin was here? Charles McGill. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chuck is the McGill in the, uh, in the firm, in the partnered. Hamlin's making you a chump. I'm going to get better. Ooh. Back to work and I'm picking up where I left off. Clever though you might be, are you deluding yourself, mate? What have you got? Also, didn't he say 800 a week? Not being funny. What was it, 26,000? The check, was that for a month though? It seems like he's uh, Hamlin's shortchanging, dude. Howard brought this. He's concerned. You have to admit it could be confusing. Hamlin, Hamlin, McGill, James M. McGill. Right. He's going to change his name. So, let's go pick. So I'm not supposed to use my name. It's simply a matter of professional courtesy. It seems very much like Chuck is too nice. He seems lovely, and that's not a bad thing. But I do feel like he's in a world with, I don't trust Hamlin at all. I don't trust him at all. That's, I mean, and that's how the show's re arranging his character, right? So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But at least so far, I don't trust him. Wouldn't you rather build your own identity. Why ride on someone else's coattails? Hey, I approve of that, but also, like, why are you pushing him so far away from the identity he's got? Do you know what I mean? There's a little bit of damage in there, too. There's nothing wrong with uh, splitting apart. I mean, we had that in, you know, in Breaking Bad with Walt and Walt Jr., right? And Walt Jr. being Flynn. 
And it's very interesting that again, we've got, you know, name manipulation or, or name change, uh, you know, straight from the off, straight from the off, which is again, this parallel with Breaking Bad. And it's so interesting that it's presented in that way because it is a thing of like, I, I'm always an advocate. I'm like, yeah, be your own person, break away. But also this is a situation where Saul doesn't necessarily want to, right? And it's like, if they don't want to, don't try and force them to do that either. You wanna dance, Howard? Mm. Let's dance. Okay. Interesting, so be careful, dude. Be careful, he's got a whole company behind him, a lot of money behind him, a whole staff behind him, you know? Go! Hmm, these guys again, huh? I mean, I don't know what you mean. Ooh, interesting. Hey, so are you going to use them or, or their tactic to get a uh, Hamlin in the dirt, maybe? How did you find us? I know. Eerie, right? <laughs> Amazing shot. Could be the most profitable 30 seconds of your lives. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, you guys growing up out here in the Golden West. You... Not being funny. I'm not a big fan of how these guys are trying to come for my look. Do you know what I mean? Like what? Have some respect. But not Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy wait around all <laughs> I love that. Sorry, it's a small moment. I'm so sorry I'll play, but like I love that. You know, and Breaking Bad was so good for this too, where it felt like the scenes were so natural. They were I feel like the actors or I and honestly at this point maybe it's the direction too, because it's consistent. But I do feel like there's maybe a, a feeling on, on set of being like really relaxed and it's like make it feel normal, natural, don't be afraid to improv or do something. Do you know what I mean? Because like that little moment there, it does it's so interesting, isn't it? When you think about it, it's like no one no one like <clears throat> No one like does that. They, no one catches their breath. No one coughs. No one, you know, like in, in any media, in any show, in any film, in, in any TV, it's so tight. And I absolutely understand why. We all understand why. But, you know, it's like, it doesn't necessarily, there's a little bit of reality lost in that as well. And I feel like uh, Saul or Bob or whoever made that decision, whether it was Vince, whether it was someone telling him to do it, you know, whether it was orchestrated, maybe it was, I feel like maybe it was. It just, I love those little touches in the world that make it feel real. Where he's just looking at the bike, the bike comes too close and he's like, do you know what I mean? It's a natural reaction. Soon <laughs> Again. <laughs> Also nice they're bringing these two guys into it. It's a staple of this universe, these shows that they very much rely on the cast that they bring in right from the beginning. I love that. Nice boat. Yeah. Wow. She comes through here on her way to pick up her kids at Kit Carson Elementary. Yeah, nice. He's already, already dipping his toe in the dark, you know. I mean, this isn't really dark, but you know, well, it's 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 a little bit dubious, but it's more roguish. He's going down that path a little bit, which I like. I like, as the audience member, I'm like, yes, 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 please, more of this. Damn straight, go with God. <laughs> okay. Happy to be of help, Betsy. May I call you Betsy? Also the parallels between Walt and uh, Saul, because Walt used to do this too when he was, you know, less uh, practiced at it. He used to practice beforehand. We saw that. So it's so funny, it's so interesting how we've got this from Saul. I wonder if he did this when we knew him in Breaking Bad. I don't know. I think it came more naturally for sure, you know? Think of, uh... Oh, it's her. Sorry, I thought it was Hamlin. This makes sense because I was like, how, do, how does how does she not know you? Damn, that guy's got a boat. I mean, like, okay, so look, this, this lady's done nothing wrong. She's done absolutely nothing wrong, but because of how she's been arranged in the show, I'm against her. So this better go off without a hitch. That's all I'm saying. Like, get her. Do you know what I mean? Get her. You got it, boys. Come on. Oh, tell you what. I tell you what, he can take him, can't he? God, Cal, Cal, look at me. Is he actually hurt? What's she doing in there? Okay, good. Give a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, of course she's a hit and runner. Hey! Of course, hey. Is she gonna crash into Saul? Of course she's a hit and runner. Okay, no, she's bad. Let's, let's get her, let's get her. Sick her boy. I don't know who the boy is, I'm so sorry. You're following her how? We got our ways, yo. Okay. <laughs> Wow, she took off, man. You fell into the honey pot, kid. Hit and run is a felony. Yeah. So what, some more money? Yeah, come on, you can work it and he can actually be your lawyer. This is more money. So what do we need him for? He's your lawyer. Oh, come on. Go, 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 get going, boy. Oh, hold up. Hey. Oh, what? Que pasa? Habla English. We... Oh, they got the wrong one. Policia. La policia. Look at the windshield. Dinero. Are you sure the windshield's cracked, man? Me is that money? Yeah. No, that's... Um, what's happening here? Did they get the wrong one? Okay. Miho, though, she was calling someone. Are these boys gonna be in trouble? Officer of the court! Open up in the name of the law! Nice. Power stance. Good afternoon, this... Okay. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, <gasps> no! What? 
<laughs> Come on. How did that get? Hang on. How does she have this car? So many questions. All right. No f way. Tuco. Oh, Tuco came back. I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know that was going to happen, man. Miho, I told you, she was calling someone. She was calling Tuco. Of course she was. Amazing. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. That is episode one, Uno, of Better Call Saul. Oh, I'm so hyped. I, I genuinely, it's so good to be back. It's so good. I don't know what I'm going to do when this show ends, man. Oh, dear Lord. They Like, Vince, Vince, get on the get on a show. Get on another one. Another one. Okay. Okay. But no, a great, great establishing episode. Um, I, I mean, this was like 50 minutes, 53 minutes or something. And honestly, the amount that they packed in there, you know, they established the show going forward. They introduced new characters. They introduced Chuck. Hamlin, all that stuff. They planted those seeds, those, you know, the foundation going forward. The amount of callbacks, honestly, in this episode alone were like really, really good, you know, just from Breaking Bad. I've talked about them a lot, so I'm not going to rehash them here, but I think getting those into your show and, you know, it just shows the care that they give to uh, these kinds of shows and, and, and calling back El Camino, which I've just watched, did that too. Yeah, just the right amount of like Mike Tuco, which was completely unexpected, man. Like the first episode of Better Call Saul and we've got Tuco. I didn't expect that. I'll be honest. I did not expect him to be a part of this show. I did not expect, I mean, to be fair, that opens the door though, right? We've got all of the Dons, we've got all of the cartels, all of those players. It kind of opens the door for more and more and more characters from Breaking Bad to come in, right? It's a prequel after all. It's very interesting as well, the opening of the of the show itself and the, you know, the, the, the black and white. The, it's very, again, very reminiscent, very parallel with Breaking Bad, flash forwards, flashbacks, all that stuff. I absolutely think, you know, when he put the tape in, that was absolutely, I think, supposed to be telling you that it, it's, it's post-Breaking Bad that and you know that explains his reaction when he thought he was caught you know anyway interesting that we've got a six season run of, and I checked, there's 10 episodes every single season, apart from season six, I think, where there's 13. Very interesting. But that's a lot of episodes. And so to include a post-breaking band in episode one, right, to, to, straight from the off, to open with, very interesting. I wonder if they're going to have that throughout, or maybe they're not going to touch that again until later. I don't know. I don't know. It, get, it whets the appetite, though. It whets the appetite, right? And I feel like this uh, opening episode absolutely just whets the appetite in many different ways, just in the way that it establishes the show, in all the parallels, all the callbacks, Mike, Tuco, mwah. Anyway, I will end this there. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Come on this journey with me and we will watch Better Call Saul every single Sunday, mate. Thank you so much to my patrons who give me their real life money. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to the rest of you as well and I will see you very, very soon.